welcome to the overview of smart pointers, pointers in C++. Well, okay. The modern C++ favors references over pointers. In modern designs, pointers are rarely seen. The main reason people are moving away from pointers is that pointers are hard. Well, one may agree or disagree, but pointers must be handled with an extra care. If not, uh, problems begin to rise, which I'll talk briefly in, in a bit. So why do we need pointers? Well, in contrast to references, pointers are assignable. And that is a prerequisite for a type to be used in stood containers. Additionally, pointers can be nulled. Of course, there are ways to get past those requirements like std reference wire wrapper, which is assignable. I'll talk about this construct a bit in a bit. And uh, we can also create some dummy object uh, just to, uh, to represent our null type. However, it will cause problems, especially with dynamic inheritance. So although pointers can be used in many different ways, uh, from here on now, I'll just refer to them uh, whenever I'll be talking about the dynamic resource allocation. So why do we need the dynamic allocation? Well, there are three main reasons, though there may be actually more. Uh, the first one is the lifetime of an object. It is not bound to a stack frame. Second is that we do not know the size of the compile time. And last but not least, we may have the OS stack size limitations and we'll just have to use heap anyway. So what is the motivation for smart pointers? Uh, when working with world pointers, we need to put an extra care when handling them. And some of the problems are a dangling pointer, uh, the pointer that holds a value to uh, the allocated memory block or a block that was reallocated but now points to some other object. Uh, the invalid deallocation of call uh, with row pointers, uh, we do not really know what was used to allocate the sport pointer uh, just by looking at the pointer type. Uh, we can also have a loss pointer that the object will never be freed and we'll get a memory leak or we can have a double delete uh, the different objects try to deallocate the same block. Oh, the main motivation for the smart pointers is the ownership. Smart pointers own the underlying pointer. Those prevent uh, the most common problems which arise when using the row pointers, uh, as row pointers may or may not own the object. While all the overloaded operators are there, smart pointers act like uh, they are row pointers. So I'm in contrast to the previous mentions to the reference wrapper, uh, this construct does not own the object. Um, smart pointers do try to prevent the ownership, but still a programmer must take an extra care when uh, handling those constructs as it is possible via the get function to return the row pointer. So um, with, from the C++11, we got two constructs, the std shared pointer and the std unique pointer. Before that, we had the std auto pointer, but we'll not talk about it as it is a terrible construct. Mostly it tried to uh, mimic the behavior of the unique pointer, but there was no move semantics implemented in the language. Uh, so the auto pointer was deprecated in C11 and removed completely in C17. Uh, so in fact, there are three constructs, but the std weak pointer is strictly connected with the std shared pointer. Uh, so it's not a separate construct on its own, and I'll talk about it uh, a bit uh, once we get to the std shared pointer. Okay, so um, let's start with the shared pointer. As its name implies, it allows an object to be shared. Uh, it can be initialized uh, in two ways, either via the constructor or the reset function, which are basically the same, or the std make shared uh, global function. Uh, the difference between those constructs uh, is very important. So internally, the std shared pointer holds both the underlying pointer and the control block, which is used as a reference counter. Uh, with, this con uh, with the constructor or the reset function, the std shared needs to create a control block. With the std make shared, the control block is created along with the storage for pointer. 
That being said, the std make shared will call new once, while the other methods will need two, two new calls for the full initialization. So from, pers per from performance perspective, std make shared should always be preferred, though that should not be the rule of thumb as uh, that's not always the preferred method. I'll talk about it once we reach the weak pointer. So um, each destructor called decrements the counter and the underlying pointer is freed once the reference count hits zero. The object is freed using the deleter, which I'll cover uh, later. Uh, we can also check how many uh, references exist by calling the useCount function. Um, as I mentioned before, the smart pointers act like low row pointers due to the overloaded operators. Those, those two constructs from the implementation perspective can be handled the same way, uh, sort of. I mean, there are exceptions and we'll cover them as well. But from performance perspective, they are not equivalent, especially when it comes to iterating a collection. Uh, please note the reference here, it's crucial. This is because copying of the std shared pointer is expensive. The standard committee decided to make this construct thread safe and to be precise, its control block is thread safe. So as you can see here, this is a simple loop scenario where we iterate over 100 elements. And this is just running a single thread. So the difference is huge. That arises a serious issue with the std shared pointer. Logically, we should use the pass by value as the object is shared. Yet that causes a huge performance hit. All those smart, smart pointers mimic the behavior of the row pointers. They are enabled to perform the standard casting. For that reason, we are giving the four equivalent functions to perform the cast from the T type shared pointer to the U type shared pointer. Well, we can always use a hack, but as I mentioned before, if we use the get function, well, we ask for trouble. So um, to make things even worse, if we stick with the std shared pointer, uh, we can easily create a cyclic reference. In such situations, those two objects, A and B, will never be destroyed as the reference counters will never hit zero. Uh, Standard took that into consideration and that was the motivation for the weak pointer. The std weak pointer is a construct that allows for pointer sharing, but not own, owning the underlying pointer. So in, in short, it is used for observing. <clears throat> we create a std weak pointer from a shared pointer. As it does not own the object, we do need to call the lock function before we can work on the on that pointer. Uh, this, in fact, uh, in return, creates a new instance of the std shared pointer. Uh, with std weak pointer, we always must check the return value of the lock function call because if the pointer is no longer valid, the resulting std shared pointer will have an underlying pointer of null value. <clears throat> Um, with all that being said, let's uh, go back to the shared pointer control block. In fact, it has uh, a reference counter for both owners being the std shared pointers and observers being the std weak pointers references. The control block will be deleted once both owners and observer counters are zero. So let's look once again at the two ways we can create a shared pointer object. Now, as I mentioned before, we have either the constructor and a reset function or the std make shared. The std make shared will have a single new uh, call to create both the control block and the placeholder for the pointer. And let's focus at the end of the first block, as those arrows are pointing to. Uh, we have a single weak pointer, the observer reference there. Because we, uh, we have a non-zero reference counter in the control block, we cannot destroy the control block itself. On the left uh, hand side, we only have a control block. The pointer is no longer valid, thus it was deleted once the last owner reference hit zero. However, 
on the right side where the std make shared function was used, we have a single block of memory containing both control block and the pointer. The pointer will not be deleted as linked with the control block. One object will be destroyed. Of course, the destructor will be called, uh, but the memory will not be free. Uh, with a bad design where we do keep the weak pointer longer than needed, it may cause problems if the memory is an issue. That alone prevents the right choice in, in initializing the StudShare pointer instance. Okay. On the other hand, the std make share prevents from double initialization, where we create more than one uh, shared pointer object by passing the row pointer. Now, both the SP1 and SP2 think that they are the rightful owners of the P pointer. The workaround is to use the std make shared from this template, which in fact creates a std wing pointer observing the this pointer of the of our of our class uh, of our object. That, however, is not fully functional workaround as we still need still need to know if the std wing pointer was initialized or not. Uh, uh, the need to create this the std shared pointer from it. Uh, is needed, otherwise uh, it will be null. Uh, thus, we do need to keep track of our calls. And the need for the public inheritance may cause uh, polymorphic, polymorphic problems with the multi-inheritance. So um, to summarize, the std shared pointer and the std weak pointer must be handled with care, just as the row pointers. Um, the last construct uh, uh, is the std unique pointer. In contrast to std shared pointer, the unique pointer has an exclusive ownership of the underlying pointer. With that in mind, the std unique pointer cannot be copied, but can be moved. So um, with the exclusive ownership, the unique pointer does not need a control block. Thus, there is no performance difference where if we use the constructor, the reset function, or the std make unique global function. This time, the std make unique will be preferred in almost every single case as it will pre prevent us from double initialization. So, as the std unique pointer cannot be copied, we do not get any casting functions as we had with the std shared pointer. This time, such operation requires a fallback to using the row pointer. Um, the last thing I want to talk about in regards to smart pointers are deleters. The std shared pointer has a deleter, deleter passed as an argument in a constructor where the unique pointer has a deleter uh, as part of its type. Either way, we can use our custom deleters. So with all that in mind, uh, we can use the std shared pointer, the std unique pointer constructs to manage our own RAI types, like in the example shown, where we do handle the file in our own RAI way. Okay, so to summarize, <laughs> one should always prefer the std unique pointer over the std shared pointer, as it has no performance penalty compared to row pointers where the shared pointer does, especially if not handled correctly. And don't let the pointer imply that the, those constructs are only used for pointers. They can work magic with custom deleters. Thank you.